Many of you know my oldest kid is seven and is in first grade. This is actually their first year in public school for kindergarten. We homeschooled them. And so I thought I would do a video just going through some typical lunches that I make for them. This is 10, maybe 11 lunches, so two weeks worth of school lunches. Now I will say our school doesn't have any restrictions on what you can bring. I know some you can't bring peanut butter. I think it was a patron said that their school you can't bring any tree nuts at all. Again, our elementary doesn't have any restrictions, but they are like not allowed to share food. Now I don't know how stringent they are with those rules. I mean, and certainly when I was a kid, there were no rules. You bring whatever food you want and you share with whoever you want. But this is a smaller school and obviously things are different now. So I don't know, maybe teachers, well, it's a lot of volunteers too, watching kids during lunch. It's a lot of parents volunteering. I don't know. I would be surprised if kids weren't regularly sharing food with other kids. Maybe not. Point is you will see lots of peanut butter and almonds and lots of other nuts because those are very healthy foods and also because my kid is vegan. And nuts are a very good way to get them healthy fats and protein and calories. Also very easy, right? It's so easy to just take some roasted salted nuts and throw them into the lunchbox, which is really important for me because I'm not going to spend a lot of time making lunch because I have three little children. I do a lot. And also I make lunch in the morning. I know everyone says make lunch the night before so you don't have to do it in the morning. But then that's another thing I have to do at night. And it's eaten into my resting, watching Seinfeld reruns and Fargo, finally making it through Fargo. Point is I like to do it in the morning, but obviously there's a lot to do in the morning. So I only have about five minutes to get it finished and then get us out the door. And nuts and seeds are very quick and easy. Okay, so let's look at the first one in no particular order. We've got a peanut butter sandwich, blueberries, carrot sticks, and hummus. So this is kind of your most basic one. One of the healthier ones, there really isn't anything unhealthy at all in here. You've got vitamin A from the carrots. Now, typically I don't give my kids vegetables for lunch because I don't know, man, I didn't have to eat vegetables with lunch. Carrot sticks, celery is one thing, but like broccoli or something. Nah, man, I'm not putting broccoli in my kid's lunch, you know, unless they want it. That's fine. And the peanut butter is just regular. I think it's the Kroger brand peanut butter. It's not the natural peanut butter that's all gloopy and doesn't have any sugar. <laughs> it's got a little bit of sugar in it. And then the bread, I really like the Sara Lee one. That is whole wheat, but it's still pretty soft and like airy. I don't like the super dense whole wheat bread, especially the ones with all the stuff in them, all the seeds and stuff on them. I don't know. It's not good. And the kids don't like that either. Anyway, so obviously we have lots of healthy carbs. We have lots of healthy fat from the peanut butter, from the hummus as well. Now I don't always put a dip or dressing in here. In fact, I think most of the time I put like a little candy, <laughs> a little snack in there. Like I said, vitamin A from the carrot, antioxidants from the blueberries, pretty healthy and very quick. The second one is one of my kids' most favorite things, the sandwich that I regularly make. Again, I use the Sara Lee whole wheat bread. I use some mayo, the follow your heart vegan mayo, some sort of vegan cheese slice. Usually it's going to be Violife or recently I've been buying the Vitalife, I think it is because they've had that at grocery outlet on sale and it's fine. Or the Daya, if the Daya is on sale, again, it's fine. We really prefer the Violife or the Cho cheeses. I say we, but like seven-year-old really doesn't care. They just love they love cheese. They love any vegan cheese. My five-year-old's more like me, not, not so big on the cheese. And then for the deli slices, either Tofurky or the Kroger brand, the Simple Truth slices, those are not as good to me, but they are a lot cheaper than the Tofurky. And again, seven-year-old does not seem to care. For fruit, we have some cantaloupe. I have pretty much every one of these should have some fruit in there, preferably a fruit with a good amount of vitamin C like cantaloupe or strawberries, pineapple, because vitamin C helps with iron absorption. Some smokehouse almonds. I think it's the blue diamond brand, whatever the regular nut brand is. That's another thing that is often on sale at Grocery Outlet. You can get the big bags for a little bit cheaper than you can get at Kroger or whatever. And a marshmallow. This is one of the big dandies ones. My kid loves these. Now this lunch was a huge hit. They ate every single thing. I think a few of these others, they ate every single thing for lunch. Spoiler, usually they don't finish everything. And then when we come home, they finish it as a snack. But yeah, this one, they ate all of it. We've got these wraps. I think it's the 
extreme fiber keto, I don't know, whatever they're called. I like these, I like the taste of these. They're not super rigid either, they're really easy to roll up. Yeah, so I've got one of those, got some peanut butter, some cinnamon, and some sliced apples. I really love the newish Envy apples. Not only are they so delicious, really perfect, mix of sweet and tart and juicy, but they do not brown. Like they take a long time to brown. It is super awesome. So uh, that's my preference whenever I'm slicing apples to put them in something. But yeah, they loved this wrap. They were like, please make this again delicious, <laughs> which I should say I've made this before. This isn't like a, a special new thing. It's pretty basic, but I made this before maybe a few months ago and they weren't so big on it. So I'm sure you parents already know, but always bring stuff back to kids after a little while, even older kids, even seven-year-olds, because you never know, they might love something that they previously hated. Cantaloupe, you're going to see a lot of cantaloupe on here because my kid is really not big on most fruits, but one that they consistently eat is cantaloupe. Oh, they love yellow mangoes, the Italfo mangoes, which I think are finally at Whole Foods. I need to go to Whole Foods, get my case. <laughs> Baked tofu. This is, I think, a Nora Cook's recipe. It's got some smoked paprika in it. It's very simple. I don't know. The kids really love it. I've made it tons of times now. I do add more salt. I think I double the salt. I double the whole batch too, because three kids and myself and my husband. I can't, I can't just make one block of tofu for dinner anymore. In fact, I just ordered another tofu press. The same one I ordered, you know, five, yeah, probably five, six years ago. I love that thing. It's, I mean, I haven't used any others, but it's definitely my favorite just in terms of the simplicity of it and how easy it is to clean. I love that pretzels and one of these little fruitlets gummy. This is another grocery outlet find. Kids love these things. And yeah, like I said, they ate all of this during lunch. Here's another peanut butter cinnamon apple wrap. I'm pretty sure this was the next day because again, my kid was so into it. Some more cantaloupe, some more smokehouse almonds. That's another thing I put in their lunch a lot. Some more pretzels and another marshmallow. We've got another regular PB sandwich, just a, a half sandwich, one slice of bread, some cantaloupe, some roasted cashews, smokehouse almonds, of course. We've got these veggie straws. My kid was adamant that we should get these and like, it's fine. They're not healthy. Like they're still just potato chips with just a, a little less fat than regular potato chips and some like vegetable powder in them, but they're still potato chips. And the green ones, oh, like they really taste like spinach. Disgusting. And one of these chocolate goji squares. I forgot what the brand is. You've probably seen them before. They're not bad. Now we have something new. We have some homemade pizza. Every, I don't know, every couple Sundays or so we make homemade pizza. I use this all recipes, whole wheat. It says whole wheat uh, dough. It's not totally whole wheat. It's mostly whole wheat. I like this recipe a lot. And then partner does all the rest which is nice. They roll out the dough and they use the little pokey thing to poke the holes in it. And we've got the pizza stone and we've got the pizza, the pizza flipper peel, pizza peel. The cheese is the Miyoko pizza cheese. We like that stuff a lot. We use it for pizza and I also use it for baked CD. Oh, delicious. The red sauce is just the Trader Joe's, I think, tomato basil marinara. Some sort of crumbles. I'm not sure which brand this is. It might just be the Gardein. It might be the Morningstar Farm. Some garlic, olive, tomato. I picked off the olive and tomato because seven-year-old was like, please don't make me eat that. Some strawberries, a little Lara bar, and a marshmallow. Grocery Outlet is another great place to look for Lara bars. I regularly get them there for, I don't know, a quarter of the price. Another cheese slices Sammy's, what I normally call it, again with the follow your heart mayo and the cheese slices and the deli slices on whole wheat bread, some strawberries and a marshmallow. Peanut butter sandwich, some leftover tenders from the dinner before, some cantaloupe, some more veggie straws and a marshmallow. Another peanut butter sandwich, a clementine, which a uh, seven-year-old had some thoughts on that one. They are not big into oranges, but again, it'd been a while since they had any, so I thought I'll just put them in there. They didn't know until they were at school, until it was lunchtime. And you know, maybe they'll try them and like them. And to their credit, they were not happy about it, but they ate most of them. I think there were only two segments left in there. So like, hey, 
pretty proud of them. Some nuts, some roasted salted cashews and pistachios, some hip peas. My kids love those things. I think, I don't know, I used to like them, but they taste different to me now. And I don't know if that's because they're actually different or if it's my weird food aversion stuff, you know, is it me or is it the hip peas? I don't know, but ugh. And the smell, like they just smell like feet. And the texture, I swear the texture is different too. It's a lot harder. It's not as fluffy. Okay, so I just tried some of the nacho hippies and they tasted the same to me and the texture was fine. So I think it was just my weird food aversion stuff. But I will say we have had problems in the past where not just me, but partner was like, oh yeah, what the hell? These are like super hard. Like what, what happened here? They definitely have some quality control issues sometimes. And some chocolate chips. I'm pretty sure these are the Trader Joe's, either the semi-sweet or the dark chocolate chips. Another cheesy slices, Sammy, this time with some rosy garlic that we grow in the yard. All three of my kids, including tiny, tiny baby, including my 20 month old, they go out there and they grab the, the garlic that looks like grass and they eat it. I swear that's still my top tip for getting kids to eat vegetables is to just grow stuff. They will be so excited to go out and pick it and eat it. And it's really great when they grab it and bring it into the car and then your whole car smells like garlic. Ugh. Point is, got some of that from outside, chopped it up and just sprinkled it onto the mayo. And my kid was like, yes, please do this every time. Some carrot sticks and peanut butter. That's really my seven-year-old's preference instead of hummus. They really prefer peanut butter and carrot sticks. And a homemade granola bar. This is one of, this is not one of, this is like my favorite granola bar or granola recipe. I used to make it a lot several years ago when we were still in the apartment. I just made it again the other night and I still love them. I think they're the perfect level of sweetness. They are very, very dense. One little rectangle is like 200 something calories. So many nuts, so many different kinds of nuts. I use almond and pumpkin and sunflower, walnut, hemp seeds. And the secret I think is to toast the oats. I toast the oats and I toast the almonds and it makes such a big difference. And they actually stay together with without a food processor, right? That's like, I don't know, I hate pulling out the food processor and having to use it, but if I don't and I try to make some sort of granola bar recipe, it falls apart every time. This is so dense <laughs> and with the help of a little bit of flour, I had a little bit of whole wheat flour and yeah, they stay together super well. Anyway, I didn't mean to go on and on about the, the recipe, but I will uh, put it down in the description for those who are interested. And then finally, we have another half peanut butter sandwich, some apple slices, again, envy, some baked tofu. First time I made this, this is the delish, I think, recipe. Again, seven-year-old was like, yes, because it gets all caramel caramelized, <laughs> gets all caramelized from the brown sugar and kind of crispy like around the edges. And seven-year-old was like, yes, this is so good. So they were really happy to have it for dinner and really happy to have it in their lunch as well. Now they do say like, use baking powder along with cornstarch and it makes it like nice and bubbly crispy. I didn't get that at all. It wasn't any different for me than just using cornstarch. So, but it was very, very tasty. Some more of my granola bar and some chocolate chips. Like I said, all of these are super easy, super simple, super quick, five minutes or less to put together. Sometimes I'm using leftovers from dinner, like the pizza, tenders, tofu, stuff, stuff like that, but usually not. I always want some over source of protein in there. So like the baked tofu, peanut butter sandwich, the slices on the cheesy slices sandwich, nuts, which also covers healthy fats. Um, again, vitamin C, most of these meals have cantaloupe or strawberries. And most importantly, this is all stuff that my kid likes or at least doesn't hate. The clementine being the exception. A quick note on protein, the RDA for kids four to nine is 19 grams of protein per day. It's almost impossible not to get significantly more than this, even on a vegan diet. I put all of these lunches into chronometer, into my chronometer, so ignore the heart rate activity, all that kind of stuff. That's my stuff. But I put all these lunches into chronometer and they're all like 15 grams or more of protein, except for the pizza one, I think. Yeah, the pizza one is around 10 grams, but the other ones are 15, 20, I think one's 25. So even with the 19 grams only being a minimum, even with, you know, a kid being vegan, possibly needing a bit more protein due to bioavailability issues, as long as you are feeding them a variety of food and not just, you know, fruits and vegetables and rice, it's pretty much impossible for them to not 
not get plenty of protein. If we add just a cup of fortified soy milk, that's something my kid has every day, and a quarter block of tofu, that bumps this first lunch up to 34 grams, which is actually the RDA for 9 to 13 year olds. And that's only 620 calories, like my kid eats way more than this. Yeah, I think you get my point. The main concerns for vegan kids are, of course, B12. Make sure they're getting a B12 supplement. Iodine, a multi with iodine is a good idea. Hopefully one day the plant milks will be fortified with iodine, but they are not as of yet. Vitamin A, make sure they're getting their carrots and their sweet potato. The plant milks, a lot of them, like the soy milk we give them, has some vitamin A as well. Calcium from a fortified plant milk, along with nuts and seeds and certain dark leafy greens. Iron, a lot of the more protein-rich plant foods are going to help you there. And again, you want to eat those with vitamin C wherever possible. Omega-3 fatty acids, your walnuts, your chia seeds, your flax seeds, your canola oil, selenium and zinc. Again, if you're feeding them a balanced diet, those should be covered, but it doesn't hurt to, again, give them a multi with those. Now, what we use for container or for a lunchbox, it's this brand from Amazon. We have two of these. We've been using them since the beginning of the year, so months now at this point, and they have held up just fine. I don't put the outside case into the dishwasher. I just hand wash that one because it really doesn't get gross. Partner looked at a bunch of others, but they didn't all come apart like this one does, right? Like the top comes off so you can wash that as well. We really wanted that because... I don't know, gross. It seems like that should come off so you can fully wash it. I've tested it with, obviously, with hummus, but even with more liquidy dressings and dips in the little circle container, and it has not leaked. It's pretty awesome. And I think it's perfect size for, like, kindergarten, first grade. Now, second grade, assuming my kid's going to be eating a little bit more, it's going to be harder to put a whole lot more food in here. In fact, I saw one of the reviews, someone said their kid eats, like, two sandwiches at every lunch. Seems like a lot, but yeah, you're not, you're not getting two sandwiches in there. So what we'll probably do next year is still use these and then have like a soft cooler kind of lunch bag for it to go inside and we can put more things in the bag. And it would be nice to have like the napkin or wipe or something and fork outside of the box. Cause right now I just have to figure out a way to, I mean, the napkin's easy, but sometimes the fork doesn't fit so well and my kid really likes to have a fork. Even if it's just sliced strawberries, they don't want to use their hands, they want to use a fork. <laughs> I should also say those those lunch boxes come with two containers too that you can put on the big side. And I have used those a couple of times with some leftover pasta, but most of the time, obviously I'm just doing sandwiches, so I don't use those. And for more vegan nutrition information, veganhealth.org is one of my favorites. There is a daily needs page that goes through the nutrients of concerns for vegan, like B12. Obviously, we all need to take a B12 supplement, including vegan kids. And then for kids specifically, I love the plant-based baby toddler book. Obviously, this is geared toward younger children, but most of the rules apply to school-aged kids as well. You just feed them more, right? And they can have more foods, right? Like whole nuts, whereas a one-year-old, eh, maybe not. Thank you so much for watching, everybody. I really hope you enjoyed it. Please like the video and subscribe. And thank you so much to my members and patrons at patreon.com slash unnaturalvegan. I do post two exclusive videos a month for tier two members and patrons. I just posted the first one for March, and then I will have the controversial one up in a week or so. Thanks again, guys. New video soon.